from the National Geographic headquarters in Washington, D.C. Welcome to the 29th National Geographic Bee. Please welcome the 10 finalists. I'm Prene Verado. I'm 14 years old, and I'm from Texas. I've been playing the piano since I was four and composing since I was five. Hi, I'm Nicholas Monahan. I'm age 14, I'm from Idaho, and I love national parks. Hi, I'm Veda Bataram. I'm 13, and I'm from New Jersey, and my hero is Leonardo da Vinci. I'm Max Guerin. I'm 13, I'm from the District of Columbia, and I am in a band, and I love to play guitar. Hi, I'm Rohan Kanchana, and I'm 14 years old. I'm from the state of Delaware. One of my favorite songs is Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Hi, I'm Abhinav Govindaraju. I'm 12 years old. I'm from the Granite State of New Hampshire. I'm one of the top chess players in my state. I'm Lucas Eggers. I'm 14, I'm from Minnesota and I've composed an entire album of electronic music. Hi, my name is Anisha Sala. I'm 11 years old and I'm from the state of Virginia and I love to play table tennis with my dad. Hi, my name is Thomas Wright. I'm 14, I'm from Wisconsin and I love to play lacrosse. I'm Ahilan Aranian. I'm 12 and from the state of California. I'm one belt away from becoming a black belt in Taekwondo, which means I'm pretty good. Here they are, the 2017 National Geographic Bee finalists. And now, your host, journalist, humorist, and Emmy Award winning writer, Mo Rocca. Well, hello everyone. What a pleasure it is to be back here in our nation's capital, once again hosting the National Geographic Bee. I am thrilled to be sharing the stage with these remarkable young students who outlasted more than two million to make it here to Washington, D.C., and then bested 44 terrific students in the preliminary round to become the last 10 geographers standing. <laughs> Today, one of you will earn a $50,000 scholarship and the title of National Geographic B Champion. We are ready to begin. The first five rounds will focus primarily on U.S. geography. At the conclusion of round five, the four students with the lowest scores will be eliminated. This first round will require spoken answers only. Students, are you ready? Rowan, we begin with you. More than 1,000 species of plants thrive in the bogs and estuaries on the largest island off the coast of Maine. Name this island. Grand Manan Island. I'm sorry, it's Mount Desert Island. Max, Trempolo, Chickasaw, and Yazoo are all wildlife refuges for birds migrating along the course of what river? The Mississippi River. That is correct. Beta, Alaska's Kootenai Wilderness Area, located on Admiralty Island, has one of the highest concentrations of brown bears in the world. This wilderness area lies 50 miles south of what important city? Juneau. Juneau, the correct answer. That is right. Nicholas. In the shadow of Mount Hood, the waterfalls of Mark O. Hatfield Wilderness Area cascade over basalt cliffs before draining into what river? The Columbia River. The Columbia River is correct. Prane. More than 40 species of cacti can be found in the Guadalupe Mountains, located in a desert that extends from Mexico into Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. Name this desert. The Chihuahuan Desert. That is correct. Ailan. The glacial forces that created the waterways and rocky outcrops that define the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness 
also created a large lake near its eastern border. Name this lake. Lake Superior? That is the superior answer, yes. Thomas. Located about 200 miles west of the Missouri River, what major city serves as the gateway to the Black Hills and to one of the largest cave systems in the world? Rapid City. That is correct. Anish. The Flint Hills, home to some of the last tall grass prairie in North America, stretch from northern Kansas south to what river that runs through Wichita? The Arkansas River. That is correct. Lucas. The Balcones Canyonlands National Wildlife Refuge, an important nesting site for birds, is located near what river that flows through Texas into Matagorda Bay? The Trinity River? I'm sorry, it's the Colorado River. Abinav. St. Mark's Wilderness Area, located in the Florida Panhandle, protects about 40 miles of coastline along what bay that receives the St. Mark's River? Tampa Bay? I'm sorry, it's Appalachie Bay. All right, tough first round. Once again, a lot on the line for these young folks. Third place will earn a $10,000 scholarship, $25,000 for second, and the champion will receive a $50,000 scholarship plus a lifetime membership to the National Geographic Society and an all expenses paid Lynn Blatt expedition to the Galapagos Islands aboard the National Geographic Endeavor 2. Whew, pretty cool, right? It's a lot. For round two, you'll need your writing devices because everyone answers this next question at the same time. This question is worth one point. The National Geographic Society is committed to exploring and protecting our planet, funding bold scientists who are pushing the boundaries of knowledge and changing the world. One of those scientists started out a lot like all of you. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Marlowe, a geobiologist and National Geographic Emerging Explorer. I was the Colorado State Champion of the National Geographic Bee way back in 1999, so I know how hard you've all worked to get here. My curiosity about the world led to a career studying microbes that inhabit extreme environments, a critical step that could lead to the discovery of life forms elsewhere in our solar system. Now, here's your question. A group of scientists and I recently explored newly discovered methane seeps off the coast of New England on the seafloor. Our expedition departed from what small port on Cape Cod that shares its name with a nearby oceanographic institution? Thank you, Jeffrey Marlowe. I will repeat the question. The expedition set off from what small port on Cape Cod that shares its name with a nearby oceanographic institution? Time is up. Let's see what everyone has. For one point, the correct answer is Woods Hole. Let's see how you did. Okay, so Prane, you're the only one that got it. Okay, now it is time for the first Geo Challenge of the competition. We'll be testing you not just on what you know, but how well you can reason and articulate your response. Each of you will receive a map of the United States and two choices for what the map shows. You must choose and explain why you believe your selection is correct. Your score will be based on three criteria, accuracy, reasoning, and presentation. Alex Tate, the official geographer of the National Geographic Society, and his co-judges will award you up to three points, but be careful. If you pick the wrong answer, you will receive zero points. Ready? Row on. Take a look at your map. Is this map showing wildfire hazard or earthquake hazard and why? This map is showing earthquake hazard because along major areas like the San Andreas Fault and mountainous areas, there are, hi there are higher amounts showing red. Also, in areas where there are many forests, there is less wildlife hazard. Thank you. Earthquake hazard is correct. Now let's see how the judges evaluate your explanation. Okay, Rohan, we gave you three points. Well done. Max, here is your map. Is this map showing cotton plantations or Civil War battlefields and why? 
I believe this map is showing Civil War battlefields due to the amount of um, areas in fought in Virginia and the, um, the eastern um, U United States, which were mainly where the um, Civil War was fought. Civil War battlefields is correct. Judges? Max, we gave you three points. Great job. Veda, is this map showing Indian reservations or national forests? And how can you tell? This map is showing Indian reservations because there's a high quantity of red around northeastern Arizona and other places which have Indian reservations, such as the Navajo reserva Reservation. Also, in, north in northeast U.S., there are not many markers which indicate national forests. So that is why I think this is showing Indian reservations. Thank you. Indian reservations is correct. You picked the right answer. Veda, we gave you three points. You nailed it. Nicholas. Is your map showing crude oil pipelines or fiber optic cables, and why? I believe this map is showing crude oil pipelines because Texas is known for its oil production and there are several pipelines in that state. This is not showing fiber optic cables because every part of the country needs those equally and these are not evenly spread out. That is why I think this shows oil pipelines. Thank you. You struck gold with that answer. Crude oil pipelines is correct. Nicholas, we gave you three points. That was very well done. Pranay, is this map showing population density or poverty rate, and how can you tell? I believe that this map is showing poverty rate because the areas that have a higher concentration are in the south, where poverty is higher than in other areas. It is not a population density map because New Jersey is the most densely populated state, and it has a lower concentration on this map. That is why I believe this is a poverty rate map. You are correct, it is poverty rate. Judges? Pranay, we gave you three points. Excellent work. Ailan, is this map showing hydroelectric dams or nuclear power reactors? I think this map shows nuclear power reactors because there's a high density of them in the east and in states such as Illinois and Pennsylvania and New Jersey, which produce lots of nuclear energy, and also like states which produce lots of hydroelectric energy, like say, Washington and Oregon, they barely have any thoughts, so this is why I... You are red hot with that answer, nuclear power. Judges. Ahilan, we gave you a three. Your response is great. Thomas, is your map showing solar energy potential or wind energy potential? This map is showing solar energy potential because there's a, the highest concentration of dark shading on the map is in the southwestern United States, where the most mean sunshine hours per year are, for instance, Yuma, Arizona, and in the northern United States, where it is cloudy or bad weather, there is not as much shading, and winter energy potential is in uh, windier areas, which is not in the desert areas. Right you are on solar energy potential. Judges? Thomas, we gave you three points. Great job. Anish. Is this map showing wheat production or corn production? I think this map is showing wheat production because the highest concentration of shading is in Kansas, which is the largest producer of wheat in the United States. And Iowa is the largest producer of corn production and there's not a lot of concentration on Iowa. So for these reasons, I think it's a wheat production map. Wheat is correct. Judges, how do you evaluate his explanation? Anish, we gave you full three points. That was terrific. Lucas, is this map showing passenger rail or interstate highways? This map is showing interstate highways because areas like the Northeast, which have a higher population, have more. However, there are also highways um, in the West and not as many passenger rail, um, which only connect major cities along the East or West Coast. Um, so because the interstate highways are basically even, evenly spread throughout the nation, um, I think this is interstate highways rather than passenger rail. You are speeding along. That is the correct answer. Judges, what say you? Lucas, we gave you the full three points. Nice work. Abhinav. Is your map showing average annual temperature or average annual precipitation, and why? This map is showing average annual precipitation because states in the southeast are more arid and they have a lower precipitation, and that's what it shows on this map. And it isn't showing average annual temperature because states in the south 
west, they have higher temperature and it's in the lower range. Average annual precipitation is correct. Judges, your take on the answer. Abhinav, that was a nice presentation, but your reasoning could have been stronger. We gave you two points. We felt that you needed to explain the east-west pattern of the precipitation and the north-south pattern of the temperature, which is a differentiator in this map. Okay, well that concludes the first Geo Challenge of the finals. That was a spectacular showing, wow, that reasoning. Three rounds down and two more to go before our first four eliminations. And with four points up for grabs over the next two rounds, there is still time for the students trailing to make a move. You know, when you talk to these students, you understand that their wealth of knowledge comes from their curiosity about the world we live in. And I have to be honest, I'm really curious about these kids myself. If there's one place in the world you could go to, where would it be? That's a hard question. There's so many things in every country. Did you bring anything back from Peru? Yeah, I brought a sweater. Do you have it? Those Peruvian zippers. You find a lot of penguins in Antarctica and... Can you find penguins in Washington, D.C.? The zoo. And what about over here? There too. And how do we know what kind of a penguin this is? Is there a label? I'm wondering if you could sing the national anthem like Led Zeppelin. Oh, say can you see? Every day I get back from school, I do homework, finish it, do geography or play my guitar. I call it the ukulele. It's a portmanteau of my name. So it's Luke and the ukulele, so it's ukulele. You do not get extra credit for using the word portmanteau. Is this your soccer ball? No, this is National Geographic song. Oh, right, right, right. What do you do when you're not studying geography as a stress relief? Sometimes, like, throw basketballs around in my backyard. Yeah, that one's not doing it. I actually brought my Washington Wizards jersey uh, here at the competition. Number two. Yep. Except that's... this time you're going for number one. It's called a Pyraminx. I want you to solve it now. Okay. Done. Excellent. And the home of the brave. If things don't work out here, maybe you all could go on the road. What would be the name of the band? The Cartographers. That actually sounds very hip, the Cartographers. All right, I'm gonna be a roadie. I'll take care of the penguin. Let's hear it for all 10 of our finalists on stage and for all the young geographers in our audience who made it here to Washington, D.C. Please wave and be recognized. To find out how your school can sign up for the 2018 National Geographic B, go to natgov.org. On to round four. You'll need your writing devices again for this next question. National Geographic is taking on some of the biggest challenges of our time, including protecting our oceans. We'll be hearing from another National Geographic explorer who's diving in to save our seas. Hi, I'm Claire Fiesler, marine ecologist, photographer, and National Geographic explorer. I study coral reefs to determine the effects of climate change and in recent decades, endangered elkhorn coral populations have been decimated. Elkhorn coral populations have rebounded in some small pockets, including a marine protected area off Buck Island. But their survival still depends on increased protection. Now, here's your question. Buck Island Reef National Monument is located off which Caribbean island? Our thanks to Claire Fiesler. Let me repeat the question. Buck Island and Buck Island Reef National Monument are located just off the coast of which Caribbean island? Time is up. Let's see what everyone wrote. For one point, the correct answer is St. Croix. Almost all of you had it correct. Let's check the scores to see how things stand. Pranay is out in front with six, but not far behind. Max, Veda, Nicholas, Thomas, and Anish. After this round, the four students with the lowest scores will leave us. But fear not, 
there are three points up for grabs in round five, which is a lightning round. Here's how it works. I'll give each of you three questions in a row and you'll have six seconds to answer each. One point is awarded for every correct response. Get ready because this will move like... Lightning. Thank you very much. <laughs> row on. The Rio Grande separates Ciudad Juarez from which city? El Paso. That is correct. The Truckee River drains what large lake? Lake Tahoe. That is correct. Mississippi's state nickname mentions what flowering tree? The evergreen. I'm sorry, it is magnolia. Max. What port is the terminus for the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System that starts in Prudhoe Bay? Valdez. That is correct. Wheeling, West Virginia is located on what river? The New River. I'm sorry, it's the Ohio River. What is the official animal of Maine? Time's up, it is the moose. Beta. Name Alaska's largest island. Kodiak Island. That is correct. What is the highest point in West Virginia? Spruce Knob. That's right. What landform is a tall, steep-sided tower that eroded from a mesa? A butte. I like big buttes, and I cannot lie, you other mountains can't deny. <laughs> Nicholas, name the most populous city in Connecticut. Bridgeport. That is correct. What narrow body of water separates the upper and lower peninsulas of Michigan? The Straits of Mackinac. That is correct, the Straits of Mackinac. The New Jersey state flag features the head of which animal? The deer. I'm sorry, it is the horse. Rene. The city of Fredericksburg, Virginia is located on what river? The Roanoke. I'm sorry, it's the Rappahannock River. Mount Rainier National Park is located in which mountain range? The Cascades. That's correct. Anthracite and lignite are varieties of which fossil fuel? Coal. Coal is correct. Ailan. Cape May Peninsula borders what bay? Appalachie Bay. I'm sorry, it's the Delaware Bay. Name the most populous island in the Northern Mariana Islands. Saipan. Saipan is correct. What term is given to a continuous line of thunderstorms advancing ahead of a cold front? Squall line. Squall line is right. Thomas. Beaver Island is the largest island in which of the Great Lakes? Lake Michigan. That is correct. What state capital is located on the Susquehanna River? Harrisburg. That's right. What insect structure is featured on Utah's state flag? Honeycomb. I'm sorry, it is the beehive. Anish, name the largest city on Lake Erie. Cleveland. Cleveland it is. Fort Peck Dam is located on what river? The Missouri River. That is correct. Name the blue to green mineral that is New Mexico's state gem. Emerald. I'm sorry, it's turquoise. Lucas, name the highest mountain in New Hampshire. Mount Washington. That's right. Located in Utah, Mount Nebo is the highest peak in which mountain range? The Wasatch. You got it. Name the state tree of Vermont, which is featured on its state quarter. The pine? It is the sugar maple, I'm sorry. Oh. Abhinav. The city of Grand Marais is located near the Sawtooth Mountains on what lake? Lake Superior. That is a superior answer. What Illinois city is located at the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers? Time's up, it's Cairo. Maine is the leading producer of which large marine crustacean? Crab. 
I'm sorry, it is the American Lobster. Okay, let's give a big round of applause. <laughs> Lightning quick and razor sharp. All of you are amazing. But as we look at the scores, we will have to say goodbye to Abhinav. Let's give him a big round of applause. You are a valiant competitor. Now, as we explained, only six students can continue to the next stage, and we have a big tie between Rowan, Max, Ailan, and Lucas. The tiebreaker that we're now gonna play will involve estimation. You will need to get as close to the correct number as possible. And out of these four, only one will move on. Using the Great Circle route, how many miles is it from the United States Capitol building to the Palace of Westminster? Okay. Let's see what you have. Rowan? 5,000. Max? 2,500. Ailan? 2,900. And Lucas? 3,600. And the one of you who is closest to the correct answer will move on. The correct answer is 3,674. And that means that Lucas, who was very, very close, will be moving on. And sadly, we must say goodbye to Ailan, Max, and Rowan. Let's give them a big round of applause. They're very, very dramatic. Six students remain, and when we come back, point values double, and the whole world is in play as we move closer to crowning the 2017 National Geographic B Champion. Welcome back to Washington, D.C. One of these six students will be the 29th champion of the National Geographic Bee. Remember, a total of $85,000 in scholarships will be awarded tonight. And though only the one winner will take home the grand prize of a $50,000 scholarship, each and every one of the students is uniquely outstanding. Do I have to talk like this? Or no. Do I look TV presentable? I love geography because it's universal. We can't live without it. It has to do with every part of our lives. It allows me to become a more informed global citizen. I like to look at maps and see where I've been and where I would like to go. Just a big map that you can just sprawl out on the ground and then just look at for hours. It's a little weird, but it's kind of my idea of fun. If I had a chance to go anywhere in the world, like any, anywhere, I would go to Yellowstone. It would be the Grand Canyon. I love to go to Mongolia, the different landscapes like the mountains and the forests and the desert. And whatever I do with my life, I definitely think geography will have an impact. I want to use sort of my geographic knowledge that I've gained in the B to help others and, you know, to, to change the world. How can you not be inspired by these kids? Really amazing. Okay, time to get back to it. After four more rounds, the three students with the lowest scores will be eliminated. And in this part of the competition, questions are about the entire world. And correct answers are worth two points. Students, you're gonna need your writing devices for this question. We have another special guest. Hello, my name is Paul Salopek, and I'm a journalist and National Geographic fellow. I'm walking across the world in the footsteps of our ancestors who migrated out of Africa 60,000 years ago. Right now, I'm four years into my 21,000-mile journey called the Out of Eden Walk. You can follow my journey at outofedenwalk.org. Now, here's your question. I recently walked across a desert located between two rivers, the Amudaria and the Sirdaria. What is the name of this large desert? Thank you, Paul. I'm gonna repeat the question. Paul Salopek recently walked through a desert located between the Amu Darya and the Sir Darya. Name this desert. For two points, the answer is Kizilkuma. Let's see how you all did. Four of you had it. Nicely done. It's a very tight game. Wow. On to round seven. And I'm gonna ask each of you a question about one of the world's most wild places, and a photo related to the question will appear on your monitor. 
You will have 12 seconds to answer. Begin with Veda. Croatia's Plitvica Lake National Park is famous for its natural limestone dams and waterfalls. This park is located in what mountain range that stretches from northeastern Italy to Albania? The Dinaric Mountains. The Dinaric Alps is correct. Nicholas. Namibia's Skeleton Coast, one of the world's most unspoiled shorelines, is home to fur seals, elephants, and baboons. It extends from the Angolan border south to what bay that is sheltered by Pelican Point? Shark Bay. I'm sorry, the answer is the Walvis Bay. Pranay. Balyovieja Forest, located on the border between Poland and Belarus, is home to one of Europe's last old growth forests. It's located 40 miles north of what Belarusian city on the Bug River? Press. Brest is the best answer. That's correct. Very good. Thomas. Unique rock formations and hot springs can be found near the city of Keelong along the coast of an Asian island north of the Luzon Strait. Name this island. Taiwan. Taiwan is correct. Anish. Brazil's Pantanal region is a sprawling wilderness that is home to the elusive jaguar. The gateway to this region is what city that is the capital of the state of Mato Grosso? Mondonia. I'm sorry, the answer is Cuiaba. Lucas. Koalas and penguins can be seen on the rugged coastline of Australia's Phillip Island. This island is located north of what strait? The Bass Strait? The Bass Strait is correct. Okay, up to eight points can be earned before our next set of eliminations. So there is still time to catch up for those of you behind. Let's keep things rolling with round eight. You'll need your writing devices again for this question, which is for all of you. Our next guest is an astrophysicist and host of Star Talk on the National Geographic Channel. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, and this is your space question. Next year, we will be launching the James Webb Telescope, the largest telescope ever put into space. It will see the depths of the universe as never before. It's going to be launched from a space center near Kourou, in which overseas department of France? Thank you, Neil. Once again, here's your question. The James Webb Telescope will be launched next year from a space center near Kourou, in which overseas department of France? Time's up, let's see what you've got. For two points, the correct answer is French Guiana. A clean sweep. Just one round left before three more students are eliminated. And as we take a look at the leaderboard, we see that Pranay is out in front, but nothing is set in stone since six points are still up for grabs. And our second and final, Lightning Lightning. Yeah. This time you'll receive two points for each correct response. Veda, name the highest point in Argentina. Mount Aconcagua. That is correct. The Oder River flows through a lagoon into what sea? The Baltic Sea. Right, you are. What is the official language of Brunei? Malaysian. That is correct. Nicholas. The Volga River flows into what body of water? The Caspian Sea. You got it. Isla de la Juventud is part of which country? Cuba. Cuba is right. What is the official religion of Tunisia? Islam. That is correct. Rene, name the capital of the Gambia. Banjul. That's right. What strait separates Sicily from mainland Italy? Strait of Messinium. That is correct. What is the official currency of Armenia? The drum. The drum is right. Thomas, what lake is the source of the Mackenzie River? Great Slave Lake. That's right. What sea lies to the north of the island of New Britain? The Bismarck Sea. You got it. 
What is the dominant religion of Myanmar? Buddhism. You got it. Anish, name the capital of the Comoros. Maloney. That's right. Name the highest point in Turkey. Mount Alawat. Okay, that's right. What is the official language of Bhutan? Uh, Nepalese? I'm sorry, it's Zanka. <sighs> Lucas, the historical region of Attica is part of which country? Greece. That's right. What river flows through Madrid, Spain? Tagus. I'm sorry, it's the Manzanares River. What is the currency of Bangladesh? Taka. That is correct. Well, it's that time. Three students will remain in the competition, but we now must say goodbye to three of you. And as we look at the scores, that means we're saying goodbye to Nicholas, Anish, and Lucas. Thank you all. Stellar performers, all of you. Here they are, the final three. Each has won at least a $10,000 scholarship. So congratulations, you're literally all winners. It's not just a euphemism. When we return, we put these students under the spotlight as we get one step closer to crowning our champion. Welcome back to the 29th National Geographic Bee. We have come to the penultimate round, and the three remaining finalists are now sequestered backstage where they can neither see nor hear anything happening. That's because each student will answer the same question which poses a real-world scenario, and they'll be given three possible answers from which to choose. Our panel of judges will score their responses based on the following criteria, accuracy, reasoning, and presentation. The three finalists will be asked to identify a hypothetical new home country for people in the Maldives who are being displaced by rising sea levels. Students must choose the country they think shares the most similarities with the Maldives and explain their reasoning. They can pick one of three countries, the Solomon Islands, Indonesia, or Turkey. The students must factor in the religion climate and economy in these countries. Indonesia is the best choice because it has a similar religion, Islam, a similar climate, tropical monsoon, and an economy much like the Maldives. Turkey is the second best choice because it shares the same religion and has some economic opportunities. But the climate is generally drier with colder winters. And finally, the Solomon Islands would be the least favorable answer because the country does not share the same religion or climate and has few economic opportunities. This Geo Challenge question is worth up to six points. We will give the students a moment to compose themselves, but once the bell rings, they will have 45 seconds to complete their responses. The students have been briefed on these rules, but obviously not the question. We begin with the student currently in third place. Veda, please come out on stage to be the first to answer this Geo Challenge. <laughs> Veda, here is the question. As a result of climate change, sea levels are rising and low-lying island states are at risk. In this unfortunate hypothetical scenario, the Maldives must find a new home for its people. Authorities have identified three countries, Solomon Islands, Indonesia, and Turkey that are willing to offer a new home to the Maldivian people. Based on religion, climate, and economy, which country would make the best new home for the Maldivian people and why? For the for a new home of the Maldivian people, I would choose Turkey as the location. I would choose Turkey because Turkey is an Islamic country, as is the Mar Maldives. Also, Turkey, even though it has a much colder climate, it also has areas that are similar in climate to the Maldives. Also, Turkey has a really good economy, a stronger one than the Solomon Islands and Indonesia. So that is why I would choose Turkey. Also, the Solomon Islands is, does not have the same religion as the Maldives. It also has a relatively stronger economy, but it's not enough to support this many new people. 
the climate of the Solomon Islands, though similar, is outweighed by the fact that their religion is different. Tur Indonesia has, does not have a strong economy, even though its religion and climate are similar. Right. Round of applause for Veda. Alrighty then, now let's bring out Thomas. Thomas, come on out. Thomas, here's a question. As a result of climate change, sea levels are rising and low-lying island states are at risk. In this unfortunate hypothetical scenario, the Maldives must find a new home for its people. Authorities have identified three countries, Solomon Islands, Indonesia, and Turkey, willing to offer a new home to the Maldivian people. Based on religion, climate, and economy, which country would make the best new home for the Maldivian people and why? When the bell rings, please begin. I believe Indonesia is the best choice for the people of the Maldives to relocate to because number one, they have a very similar climate located in an equatorial zone. And number two, they both share Islam as the official religion. So the people would feel at home if they were to move to Indonesia. And thirdly, Indonesia is experiencing rapid growth over uh, these last few years and is a G20 summit country, one of the only ones in Asia. And uh, the, they'd be able to go into the economy really easy. And the Solomon Islands, they don't share Islam as a religion and they would struggle also potentially with uh, uh, rising sea levels as well because they are an island country. And Turkey suffers uh, from an unstable government over the last few years with Erdogan. And that is why I believe Indonesia is the best choice. Right. <laughs> round of applause for Thomas. Now, let's bring out Pranay. Here is the question, Pranay. As a result of climate change, sea levels are rising and low-lying island states are at risk. In this unfortunate hypothetical scenario, the Maldives must find a new home for its people. Authorities have identified three countries, Solomon Islands, Indonesia, and Turkey, willing to offer a new home to the Maldivian people. Based on religion, climate, and economy, which country would make the best new home for the Maldivian people, and why? Based on religion, climate, and economy, Indonesia would make the best new home for the people of the Maldives who are needing to find a new home because of climate change. Indonesia is the best choice because it has, is located at a similar latitude along the equator, which means that it will have a similar climate like the Maldives, which is warm and humid. Turkey would not be a good choice because it's much farther north and therefore has a much different climate. The Solomon Islands are also in danger of sinking due to climate change, which is why they would not be a good choice for the people of the Maldives to move to. Therefore, I believe that Indonesia is the best choice. Great job by all of our finalists. Now our judges will take a few moments to confer. The judges have tabulated the scores for this Geo Challenge and are ready to share the results. We'll be hearing again from our lead judge, Alex Tate. Alex, how did they do? I'll start with Veda. Veda, your choice was Turkey. Not the best answer, but your reasoning was very good. Your presentation was good, but it could have been stronger. Veda, we gave you a score of four. <laughs> Thomas, you answered Indonesia, the best answer. And your rationale was excellent. Your presentation was very clear and convincing. We gave you a score of six. <laughs> Prane, you also chose Indonesia, the best answer. Your rationale was good, but it could have been better. Your presentation was very good. It was short, but it was clear. Prane, we gave you a score of five. Yeah. 
Congratulations to all of you. This means that we must say goodbye to Veda. But Veda, you are not leaving empty-handed. You are the winner of a $10,000 scholarship. Wow. And then there were two. Pranay Varada from Texas and Thomas Wright from Wisconsin. When we come back, one of these amazing young students will become the 2017 National Geographic B Champion. Welcome to the championship round of the National Geographic B. We started with 2.6 million students from across the country. 54 made it to Washington, D.C. And now Thomas and Pranay are the only two remaining with a chance to be named the 2017 National Geographic B Champion. It would mean so much. I mean, I've really put in a lot of work into this year. Winning the B would be the greatest moment of my life because I've been doing this for five years now. i definitely shake my opponent's hand first. I'd shake Muraka's hand second, and then I'd go over to my parents. Probably be really happy. And we should point out that both of you were finalists last year, so clearly this means a lot. Thomas, are you nervous? Or? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm nervous. I'm actually just happy I got as far as I did, because this is far, further than I thought I would get. How are you feeling, Pranay? A bit nervous, but I'm, I think I'm ready. Okay, let's do this. Here are the rules for the championship round. Both of you begin with a clean slate. I have five questions here. Whoever answers the most correctly will be our winner. For the last time, students, are you ready? Here is your first question. Scientists are planning to reintroduce tigers to Central Asia 50 years after they became extinct in the region. One potential site for reintroduction is the Almaty region in which country? I repeat. Scientists are planning to reintroduce tigers to Central Asia 50 years after they became extinct in the region. One potential site for reintroduction is the Almaty region in which country? Alrighty, Thomas, what do you have? Kazakhstan. Pranay, what do you have? Kazakhstan. The correct answer is Kazakhstan. Both of you are correct. On to the next question. Located on the Paraná River, one of the world's largest hydroelectric dams has a name that means singing stone in the Guarani language. Name this dam. I repeat, located on the Paraná River, one of the world's largest hydroelectric dams has a name that means singing stone in the Guarani language. Name this dam. In with you, Thomas, your answer? The Itaipu Dam. Pranay, your answer? The Itaipu Dam. The correct answer is the Itaipu Dam. You are both correct. <laughs> it's a tie score as we move to the third question. Mugia Pass, a strategic pass and a key point of entry to the Ho Chi Minh Trail, lies in what mountain range? I repeat. Mugia Pass, a strategic pass and a key point of entry to the Ho Chi Minh Trail, lies in what mountain range? Thomas, we begin with you. The Anam. Pranay, what do you have? The Anamite. The correct answer is the Anam Cordillera, also acceptable, is Anam. So Thomas takes a one point lead. Uh, do you want to challenge? Yes. Okay. Pranay is issuing a challenge here. The judges will now confer if the judges deem the answer acceptable, a point will be rewarded. If the initial ruling is upheld, a point will be deducted from the student's score, and the decision of the judges is final. Well, the judges have conferred, and, and Pranay, your answer is indeed acceptable. 
<laughs> we are back into a tie, three to three. Moving on. Tourists often reach Olmec and Mayan ruins in the Mexican state of Tabasco by going through the state's largest city. Name this city on the Grijalba River. I repeat, tourists often reach Olmec and Mayan ruins in the Mexican state of Tabasco by going through the state's largest city. Name this city on the Grijalba River. Thomas, what do you have? Via Hermosa. Prene? Via Hermosa. The correct answer is Via Hermosa. Oh boy. Four to four. And so we move on to our fifth question. This could be it. If one of you gets this right and one of you gets this wrong, then we have a champion. A small island in the Lesser Antilles is divided politically between two countries. Name this island. I repeat, a small island in the Lesser Antilles is divided politically between two countries. Name this island. Thomas, what do you have? St. Martin. Prene, what do you have? St. Martin. St. Martin is correct, so that means we move on to a tiebreaker. <laughs> the contestant who correctly answers a question that the other contestant misses will be our national champion. What large mountain system that stretches more than 1,200 miles separates the Takla Makan Desert from the Tibetan Plateau? I repeat. What large mountain system that stretches more than 1,200 miles separates the Taklamakan Desert from the Tibetan Plateau? Thomas? The Kunshan. Pranay? The Kunlun Mountains. The correct answer is the Kunlun Mountains. So. Our champion is Trené Barada from Texas! Wow! You are the 2017 National Geographic B Champion! terrific end to an amazing competition. Here is how our 10 finalists officially finished. And remember, each of these students outlasted millions of others around the country to make it to Washington, D.C. and end up on this stage. And now, to award the medals to our top three finishers, please welcome the president and CEO of the National Geographic Society, Gary Nell. Finishing in third place and winner of a $10,000 scholarship, Veda Bataram from New Jersey. <clears throat> Our runner-up and winner of a $25,000 scholarship, Thomas Wright from Wisconsin. And the winner of a $50,000 scholarship, a lifetime membership to the National Geographic Society, and an all-expenses-paid Lynn Blatt expedition to the Galapagos Island aboard the National Geographic Endeavor to the 2017 National Geographic Champion, Pranay Varada from Texas. <laughs> So, Pranay, if this were like scaling a mountain, what mountain would it be? Everest, definitely. And which is how high? 29,000, 29 feet. It doesn't matter, you already won. <laughs> Excellent. For now, please join me in congratulating Pranay Barada, our 10 finalists, and all 54 of the students who made it here to Washington, D.C. I'm Mo Rocca. Thanks for watching. And remember that science, exploration, education, and storytelling can change the world. And I want to invite the parents of all three finalists to come up on stage. Please join us.
Congratulations.